Hello, my name is Jamel Hill, and I'm a contributing writer for The Atlantic and host of the Spotify podcast, Jamel Hill is Unbothered. In spring 2020, as the United States' response to the coronavirus pandemic began reshaping what was to be a pivotal election season, the New Yorker's Jelani Cobb was on the ground in Wisconsin, a state that was a perfect microcosm of contemporary American elections. The end result was Cobb guiding us through a probing investigation into the simple question that the title piece poses, whose vote counts? Jelani's report examines the legal battles over absentee ballots in Wisconsin's 2020 primary elections, which strengthen unfounded concerns over election integrity and rampant voter fraud. As a journalist, this piece resonated with me because it was an example of us performing what I consider to be the core responsibility of our job. Our job is to cause and create disruption. Our other job is to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. This piece did that, as well as tackle a key issue at the heart of modern U.S. politics. It also showed us what the fight for voting rights looks like in the 21st century. And for that, whose vote counts receives a Peabody. As folks wait for their polling place, you can see- They've made it so difficult for people to vote here, just asking too much of people to come out with this virus going on. It was a major election in the middle of a pandemic. There's been confusion around what actually is allowed. It was difficult to request an absentee ballot. I didn't even know how to do it. And I didn't know about that option to vote through the absentee voting. Mail ballots, they cheat, okay? People cheat. Mail ballots are fraudulent in many cases. Absentee ballots delayed in the mail. I request an absentee ballot. They didn't come in time. I never came. So I was forced to go and vote at one of the five polling stations. Voters forced to choose between their health and their civic duty. Thank you to the Peabody Committee and jurors. And thank you to Frontline for giving us the opportunity to tell this story about how restrictive voter access laws are undermining democracy in our country. We went to Wisconsin and, um, well, we started talking to Wisconsin in April of 2020 via Zoom. Marcy Rubio and Bianca Ladipo worked tirelessly to lay the research foundation for what we needed to get. In the field, we were joined by Casey Cherry and Brandon Drennan, who helped us find the characters to tell the story. Thomas Jennings, you have one of the sharpest reporters' minds I've ever worked with. And Jelani Cobb, your towering intellect just allowed us to frame the entire story so well historically. We also needed the help of people to shoot and edit this film. Tim Grushka, your camera work, thank you. Fanny Lee and C.K. Tang worked tirelessly to get this done. And the Frontline editorial team, you're the best. We are thrilled to win this Peabody, thanks. Thank you so much to the Peabody Awards and to the University of Georgia. This award is a great validation of the many hours spent working on this film during a pandemic that sometimes seemed impossible to navigate. Whose Vote Counts begins with a fundamental question that a democracy should never have to ask itself. We started this project in 2018 with the awareness that the next presidential election would likely hinge not just upon which candidate made the best case to the public, but which electorate enjoyed unfettered access to the ballot box. We had no way of predicting a pandemic and a recession that would further strip away the facade of equality in the society, or the efforts to overturn the election results once they had been tabulated, or the cataclysmic assault upon the United States Congress and the Capitol Police officers charged with protecting it. What we did know, though, is that the past tends to operate as a prologue, and that racism has consistently been the Achilles heel of American democracy. Thank you, Rainey Aronson, Andrew Metz, June Cross, Tom Jennings, Kristen Lombardi, and the entire research and data teams that worked on this film. The project was truly a collaborative effort to highlight a problem whose implications have only grown more grave since it first aired. Our hope is that by shedding light on these concerns, we may help shore up the democracy, the besieged democracy, that makes our work possible in the first place. Thank you again 